All right, guys. It is January 15th, 2022. We are back in the Bible study tonight. We're going to pick up in 1 Corinthians. That's where we do our study at. Anybody new to the channel, glad to have you. Just to let you know, we meet every night at approximately 9.15 p.m. Central Standard Time, and we study that Bible. So you're welcome to join us every night if you choose to. And just so you know, last days are now. Jesus is coming, so you better be ready. We're going to talk about sheep and goats tonight before we get into 1 Corinthians. So listen, you better understand your salvation. There is no other version of salvation, but these churches today, they'll tell you otherwise, won't they? There's only one salvation that is to free you from all sin. If you're still in sin, you're not saved. And that's a fact. All right. The first John chapter three, it told you that a child of God cannot sin because he's born of God. It said in this, the children of God are manifest. You better understand the Bible. You better understand it clearly because I'm telling you time is up. Time is up. So, Let's uh, talk about these sheep and goats. So uh, remember, well, last night we were in the book of James, if I remember correctly. My mind's a little crazy because I am very sick and I'm still sick. <laughs> I had to take some cough medicine, so now my mind's a little, a little blurry. <laughs> but we're going to make it. So listen, in the book of James, it said, Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. So if you're not doing what that Bible said... You're deceived, and that's the truth, okay? So before I got uh, the study set up tonight, the Lord reminded me of some stuff to, just to share with you, some simple simple reality about some people, They're, and I'm just going to tell you about them because this, this is what I run into uh, for many years working with the Lord, and these are goats. Now, there was a man, and he had... He had financial income. He had a house and property and, you know, all this stuff, you know, the normal things of life. And then there were these other brothers and sisters in Christ. Now, this person with the house, he claimed Jesus. And then you have these other brothers and sisters in Christ, and they have lost everything for the Lord's sake. When they turned to Jesus, the devil attacked them. Their family members had turned on them. They were thrown into the streets. They had nothing. They were homeless. They're destitute. And the devil has done uh, a marvelous work in destroying their little life. But these brothers and sisters love Jesus and they don't care. They don't care the cost. And the Lord told them to go. So the man with the house, he said he's going to serve Jesus. Well, when one or two of the brothers and sisters came to his house. Now, meanwhile, let me tell you about this house. This house is, you know, he's. It's an extra house that one of his family members had passed away and he ended up with his property. So he stays there part time, you know, here and there. And pretty much him and his friends just hang out there, you know. And this is a true story. But he he said he wanted to serve Jesus and he said he was going to stand up for the brethren. He's going to provide for their needs out of his abundance. So he allowed them to come stay there. When one or two of them were there, it was okay because it was uh, convenient for him. And he was going through a time in his life when he needed some uh, some company and some friends. He was going through some uh, some turmoils of his own. But as soon as those turmoils passed, he said, you know, I'm not going to stay here. I'm going to leave. And he left. Okay. And then when another brother or sister or whatever in Christ, another person uh, needed a place, they brought that other person into that household. You see, this man told the saints that he would, this household, this property belongs to the saints, that he is going to use this for them. No matter what they go through, he has their back 100%. When this other saint showed up, all of a sudden he started complaining about having to take care of saints. He started complaining because he was bothered that his life is interrupted because brothers and sisters in Christ are needing his assistance. He began to backpedal. He began to turn away and he didn't, he's kind of like out of sight, out of mind. He just ran off and didn't want to assist and left them kind of there in that house for a little moment. Meanwhile, his uh, family members of the flesh began to uh, circle themselves around the saints to accuse them, to destroy them, to slander their names. And that man who 
provided that position for those brothers and sisters in Christ to stay there. He no longer stood up for them. In fact, he allowed the gossip and participated in gossip against them, slandering their names. Willingly and knowingly, he did this. He did this because his life was, you know, it, it was now required of him to lay down himself and his comforts to seek the service of the Lord, to be servant of servants, to do the business. Well, he back. When I said he backpedaled, he backpedaled. He no longer wanted to stand there for the brethren. For the brethren, he was turned over to the devil. He is a goat. He is a goat. Those people turned on us, and this this is a true story. They threw us in the streets, with nowhere to go, with no bank account. We don't get no bank account. Nobody call. With no care, compassion, nothing but evil threw us into the streets and it was by police escort. <laughs> yeah. Whole house, a whole, whole little house load of them. Stabbed them all in the back, betrayed them and cast them out as if they were just garbage. That's a goat. That's a goat. Now this person, he goes to church, claims Jesus, talks about Jesus. Boy, on his Facebook, he is a keyboard warrior, right? Talks about Jesus all day. But when it's time to go to work, he's not the working type. When it's time to do the business, oh, he's not the type to stand up and do the business. When it's time to play ball, he wants to go home. He's a goat. So the Lord reminded me of this stuff tonight. So I'm going to tell you about a few things. If you're not willing to lay down your life for the brethren, you're a goat. If you're not going to do what the Bible said, you're not one of the saints. So let me give you the rules and I'm going to give them to you from the Lord as the Lord telling me right now to give them all to you. I don't care who you are. I don't care how long you claim that you've known Jesus. I don't care. I'm telling you what the Lord told me is telling me to give you right now. If you are not willing to use your abundance to provide for your brethren's lack, you're not with Jesus. If it bothers you that a brother or sister is destitute of daily food, they're destitute, they have no job, no, no finance, the devil has done whatever to them or whatever the case, and you, you have your finance, you have your little house, you have your little car. If you're not willing to serve them, to provide for them, then you're not with Jesus. You fooled yourself. So I'm telling you right now, there's going to be a severance here. In just a quick minute of sheep and goats. Goats will not continue with sheep. Sheep going home. Goats, you got something else coming. We're going to read about it here in just a second. Goats fill the pews of every church in America and, and the entire world. Goats fill the, the church. There's more goats than there are sheep. I grew up with a bunch of goats. Bunches of them. They live their life. Most of them are not on the streets selling dope. Most of them are not violent. Most of them are not the, the crazy, wicked, you know, of the, of the world in that context. No, you don't see them behind the alley, you know, trying to sell pistols, <laughs> you know, and, and illegal firearms. You don't see them on cops film the location, right? You don't usually see their face in a paper with a, you know, wanted by the FBI, but the goats, the goats, what do they do? They go to church. They hear about the Bible. They go to work. They get themselves a little house, a little home, and live their life to serve who? Themselves. That's it. They serve themselves. Now, they will justify themselves because one time a man at the grocery store asked for a dollar and they gave them a dollar. And they'll say, well, I gave to the poor. They'll do something like that and justify themselves. No, but their life is to serve themselves. They stay in their comfort zone. They are the type that do not like to be uncomfortable. If the Lord had put something in their path that was uncomfortable, they will do whatever they can to go around that uncomfortable situation. If they will not bear one another's burdens, it's a burden for them to have to bear someone else's burden. These are all goats. I told you they all go to church. 
or most of them. They claim Jesus, though. Goats do claim Jesus. They're just not doers of the word. Okay, they're no more than a Pharisee. They're a hypocrite. And it is what it is. And I, I wonder why people do not notice that the church, the church is of the earth right now, since, you know, in this generation, they don't tell you about doing what the Bible said anymore. More or less, they just talk about it. They just talk about it. You see, if you belong to Jesus Christ and you're a member of the body of Christ, the things that you have are not your own. Did you know that? The Bible told you in the book of Acts very clearly that they counted the, the, uh, their possessions as not their own. They distribute amongst one another, each according to their needs, so that all have equality. If you belong to Jesus, that's how you will, that's what you will conform to. If you don't, then you won't. I watched a generation grow up in the, in the United States of America, and I watched them claim Jesus and turn into and conform to this world. I watched them. I watched them turn into every man for himself, the most selfish generation, self-serving individuals while claiming Christ all day. When you told them to bear someone's burden, they don't even know what that means. When one of the brothers or sisters in Christ has nothing, they just turn their back and go home. They don't want to get involved. I've watched preachers from the ver from the in front of the congregation wear a watch worth thousands of dollars. And I'm not talking about mega church. I have watched them drive their brand new Cadillac. I have. I have watched them with their two, three-story house in a beautiful subdivision and take their beautiful vacations all over the earth come back to the church and then share all their beautiful vacation pictures on a, on a slideshow telling everybody about, Oh, they went on this beautiful vacation while you've got people sitting in the congregation who cannot even afford fuel in the car to get to church who don't have any groceries. And I've watched a preacher sit there and boast of his things and, and, and all this stuff he's doing in, in, in front of them with no compassion thinking of them at all. These are all goats. Every last one of them, they are fake. They're fake. And they fool themselves. They think that they're going somewhere without doing what that Bible said. No, they're not going anywhere. And you cannot pick and choose what you're going to do at the Bible. If you are going to be a member of the body of Christ, you will be that Bible. It will be you. You will match the Bible. The Bible will match you. And they will. the world can see you. They can see you because they know who you are. You do what the Bible says. So don't be the goats. And I'm trying to tell you, it's not just some little things. If tomorrow, if, and you, you belong to Jesus, if tomorrow somebody is in your parking lot, they have nowhere to go and they want to serve Jesus. You get that person, you bring them in your house. I'm not talking about some filthy sinner. I'm talking about somebody who's seeking Jesus or who belongs to Jesus. You put them in your house because your house is now their house. You put them in, in, in your house. You feed them, you take care of them, and I don't care. You don't ask them for anything in return. You make your life the business to make sure they're okay. That's your life. That's your service. Your service, and it's your duty to provide for them. You're not to dictate them. You're not to rule and reign over them. You're not to look down your nose at them. You are to have compassion and love for them and praise God that you have an opportunity and the ability to take care of them. And you better take care of them just as if you were taking care of Jesus Christ himself. That's hard for a lot of people to swallow. But that's what your Bible said. If many of you were to come with me, and I work directly for the Lord. The Lord sent me to do this business years ago. I have been doing this business, but my, my household, it has rules. If I were to meet you on the street or you were to say, I'm going to come join you and you were to come join me, then you must walk the same way I walk. And that's by God. If you fail to walk the same way that I walk, God severs you and you will not continue with me or the saints. That's a fact. 
that goes for everybody across the world who belongs to Christ. All of the saints, the actual saints, walk the same. Now, as a baby in Christ, that doesn't mean your age, by the way. A baby in Christ means an infant in learning. You, you are not matured yet. As a baby in Christ, you have not yet matured in spiritual matters. So as a baby in Christ, some of you don't know what to do. You don't know how to do these things, but you will grow. You will grow. Nobody goes to school to stay in the, in the kindergarten forever. You must go to school and graduate from one grade to the next grade and advance. You must advance. You must mature. So part of your spiritual maturity is being about the business, and the business indeed is all action, and it's selfless action. So if you're with me, and I'm telling you, if you were with me, you better hang on. You better hang on. Because we're subject to be in the streets in about any, any minute, any day. We're subject to be a, surrounded by police any day, at any minute. You are subject to be attacked by devils at any time. It doesn't matter. You better be ready. You better be ready. You better be willing to lose every single thing that you have and don't and do not care. Count it a loss at the drop of a hat. You better. And when we are in the streets, because it happens quite often, we're going to be in the streets. That's where we go. And we end up in the lowliest place where the guns are shot outside the front door. You will stay inside that house and serve God and praise him even in the storm. While they're out there shooting, I may ask you to come with me. You're like, where are we going? We're going where they're shooting the guns. You ask me, are you crazy? And I would tell you, oh, no, we got business to tend to. You never know what's going to happen when you walk with the Lord. But whatever he says, do we do. And if he sends you out there in the middle of all of them with the pistols and all the crazy stuff and the dope and the drugs and who knows what's in the street, we're going. And we're going to tell them about Jesus. And if one of them wants Jesus and they have no place to stay, guess what? We're going to scoot over. Guys, we will fill motel rooms up with two. They have two beds in them. We will fill that motel room up with six, seven, eight, nine people in one little room. Sometimes we'll have people in a small little, well, I don't even know what you call it. It's like a third of a mobile home, a little bitty thing the size of a camper, one room, one living room, and a little small bedroom attached to it. That's it. We would have that place filled up with six, seven people with a line to the restroom. But you live your life to serve one another and at all times shine your lights before men. The sheep are doers of the word, goats are not. A goat cannot walk with saints. And that is that is sad. It is sad. Now, all the sheep are not called to the front line. They're not called to the... Uh, you know, to the, to the things that some of us are called to. All the sheep are not. Some of the sheep are set back and relaxed. Okay? But when a time comes, and it will come, they willingly and gladly honor their Lord. Willingly and, and gladly honor their Lord. Even if it's just the $5 in their pocket and somebody needs some food, they will, they will, they will provide asking nothing in return. Go, goats don't do this. Goats complain because somebody needs a hamburger and they complain. Oh, I can't, I can't believe. And they may even give it to them. They might, but they'll complain the entire way home. God hates complainers. Murmurs. Having not the spirit. Goats complain about having to do things, about having to go out of their way because they, they're missing the, the movies, you know, all the worldly junk. They're missing the little night at home. Goats complain because they have to uh, not have their anniversary dinner with their wife because a sheep is in need. Oh, my. Oh, my. You see, they serve themselves. Their heart is self-centered. They don't have the Lord. They have man-made religion. And these churches are filled from the pew to the pulpit with all the same thing, goats. It is what it is. How many of you have been to a church or know of a church that you can walk into there having no dollars and no cents to your name. You've got a backpack on your back with a little bit of clothing. And you were to walk in and say, Pastor so-and-so, I've got nothing. They've thrown me to the streets. I need a place to live. And he would say, don't worry. You put your stuff right down here. You're coming with me to my house. 
you tell me where that church is at. You tell me where that church is at. You tell me where you find a pastor who looks amongst the congregation and says, you know, I have all of these things and I see that there's brothers and sisters in this in this congregation who are lacking. We need to make sure that we all have equality here. And he began to sell his goods or provide you with his goods or whatever the case to make sure that you're you're catered to, that you're taken care of. If it was a true saint, oh, he would. He would. Guys, there is a day fixing to hit right now in a minute. Any minute. People's jaws are going to drop when they find out that they're goats. But the Bible told you so. They have heaped to themselves goat doctrine that tells everybody we can talk about Jesus in a, in a different way. We can study the Bible in a different way. We can think about the things of God in a different way where it says that we hear about it and we believe it exists, but we don't obey it. Well, that's goat doctrine. Goats are goats. Sheep are not. Sheep are different. Sheep have the Lord's spirit in them, and God is love. A sheep loves his neighbor as himself. A sheep also loves his enemy. Let me tell you about a sheep. If an enemy were to try to attack a sheep, that sheep, it, the sheep may rebuke him right in his face. That sheep may tell him right in his face exactly what that person is doing is evil. He go home, close his door in that sheep's house, and he'll sit there. He forgive that that person for trying to attack him, that enemy. All of a sudden, there's a knock on the door. Guess who it is? It's the enemy. They're back. The sheep says, "Oh no, here we go again." The sheep opens the door, and there's that man who just tried to attack him, and he says, "Man, look, dude, I'm sorry, but uh, uh can I get something to eat?" You know what that sheep would do? Well, I'll tell you what he won't do. He's not going to kick that man in the head. He's not going to spit on that man. He's not going to slam the door in that man's face. He's going to say, yeah, give me a minute. I'll get you something to eat. He's going to feed even his enemy. He's going to give him something to drink. He doesn't care. He seeks peace with all people. He doesn't mix with sinners, but sinners attack him. A sheep is a sheep. He's a doer of the word. Goats or not. So you need to examine yourself to make sure you know which one you are. Again, I'll tell you this. Many people claim the name of Jesus are goats. God is not asking you and never has asked you about your comfort. I don't know where this world got off thinking this. If you're not willing to deny yourself, take up your cross and follow Jesus, you can't follow him. You cannot be his disciple. So if he tells you tomorrow... You're fixing to lose it all. The devil's fixing to strip your world out from under you. You're going in the streets. What you going to do? You'd be wise to say, yes, sir, my Lord and my God. Thy will be done. Please give me strength to do it. And go. With all faith, knowing the Lord is not sending you somewhere. or Something's happening to you that's outside of God's control. And when you get in them streets, don't sit there and complain about your situation. No, no, no. Use your situation because it is an opportunity for you to be on ground zero with the sheep that are lost and the goats so that you can shine your light before men at all times, glorifying your father in heaven. I'm telling you guys this because this is a serious matter. We have a lot of people who know about the business but have not put their car in drive. You know about the race, but you never got on the track to run it. And we run the race. Be about your Lord's business means be about your Lord's business. Okay. So use what time we have to glorify your father in heaven. I mean, use it. Stop putting yourself before others. Put others before yourself. The Lord will always bless you for doing so. And this is how you store your riches in heaven. Without doing what the Bible said, you have no riches in heaven. Therefore, when he comes, you will be found naked and ashamed. You're not in white raiment. You're in nothing. You have no riches. You're poor, blind, miserable, wretched, and naked, just like the lukewarm Laodicea, who their heart is worried about the riches of this world, all the merchandise, 
of this earth. That's what they are. That's lukewarm. Lukewarm goes to church all the time, but they're worried about this world's possessions. They're not worried about doing the business of the Lord. They don't produce fruit. They're goats. And unless they repent, they're going to remain a goat. And if you remain a goat, you're going in the fire. So be the sheep. Live your life for real to serve one another. I mean, literally, literally do this. Stop complaining about having to do something to help someone. A goat will listen. A goats, I've heard it and it disgusts me how much they complain about having to assist somebody. How much they complain about having to go out of the way to help somebody. It disgusts me because Jesus went out of his way to, to have your charges placed on him and those nails driven through his hands and feet for you. He didn't complain one time, yet you. To give somebody a place to stay, to feed them, to take care of them, to shine your lights before men so that they may see your good works and glorify your father in heaven. You say, oh, no, that bothers me. A bunch of goats sitting down, you read about the Bible and you like the idea of heaven, but you don't like the idea about doing the business. You better not be the goats. So we're going to read about these sheep and goats. Right here in Matthew chapter 25. Verse 31 forward, if the internet will catch up here, it's very slow. Here we go. Let's read. This is what Jesus said about these sheep and goats. It says, when the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. Naked, and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him saying, Lord, when saw we thee a hungry and fed thee or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, verily I say unto you, inasmuch as you have done it, Unto one of the least of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me. Remember that when a child of God, who's, by the way, the only way to be a child of God is to be born again of his spirit. That means he is inside of them. They are one with Christ and Christ in them. The mystery of the Gentile, Christ in us. What you do to him or you do to them, you do to him. It's the body of Christ. And when you do these things unto the brethren, you do it unto Jesus. But the goats, it says, then shall he say unto them on the left hand, depart from me, you cursed into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no meat. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger and you took me not in naked and you clothed me not sick and in prison and you visited me not. Then shall they also answer him saying, Lord, when saw we thee a hungry or a thirst or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them saying, verily, I say unto you, inasmuch as you did it not to one of the least of these, you did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment. That's everlasting. There's no coming back. But the righteous into life eternal. So your doing of the word is a command. It's not a suggestion. If you are one of these people who listen to the Bible all the time, you can share the Bible all the time but you don't do it. We are goat. It just is what it is. And when you turn your back on the brethren and they're thirsty, you don't give them any drink. They're hungry. You don't give them any food. 
They're a stranger, but you don't give them a place to stay. Well, you're going into everlasting punishment. There's no coming back. This Bible is straightforward. The sheep, they're going into a very special place. The Lord has prepared for them. Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. That's where the sheep are going. Goats, you're not going there. All right? So y'all can stop with all this complaining and self-explaining uh, yourself away on why you don't do what the Bible said. You can explain it all you want to. It does you no good. Either you're a doer of the word or you're not. If you're a hearer only and not a doer, then you've deceived yourself. You think you get something out of it. No, nope. claiming Jesus doesn't make you saved. Being born again of his spirit will, will free you from all sin and make you this new creature who is about your father's business. You will do unto others as you would have others do unto you. But a goat doesn't. You better understand it. Be about your father's business and actually do what the word said. And this shit, this isn't, you can't just say, well, I did that last week. It, no, either you are this, you are a sheep or you are a goat trying to do sheep business. Goats will try to do sheep business, but it bothers them and they've done too much. I gotta, I gotta relax. A sheep just is okay. It's because the power of God made them this way. They're a brand new creature. They don't say, well, I've already given this many people so much help. And I'm done now. No, they just are. And, and it's not according to what they don't have. Don't have. It's according to what they do have. And if and guess what? If a sheep doesn't have the ability to help you with your food, a sheep will say, hang on, let me make a phone call. They will try to figure out a way to help you. A sheep always walks in love. So be the sheep. Sheep are about business. They, they do the father's business, kingdom business. So make sure that you are the sheep because without being a doer of the word, you have no light. Your light, first of all, is with no darkness. That means sin is removed and now you're about your father's business. You are created unto good works. If any person has not good works, <laughs> they're none of his. You see what I'm saying? Faith without works is what? Dead. It is dead. Faith without works is dead. So if you're not going to do what the Bible said, you're a goat and you're not going to heaven, you're going to hell. And that's a fact. I'm tired of all this, all these thousands of denominations teaching you every other thing except the facts of the Bible. Right here in Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 forward, it says, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Well, let's examine this portion. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Why? Because you can't help but see it. Just like a child of God shines their light. You can't help but see it because they do. It says, neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick and gives light unto all that are in the house. What that's supposed to be you. You don't have a candle. You light it and then throw it in your sock drawer. No, you put it in a position that it will give light to every person that has an eye to see. They're going to see this candle loud and clear. It's going to shine light for even them to see. You see, your light also shows others how to walk as Christ. You are walking and living examples of Jesus. It said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. That's how you glorify God in heaven, is you do the business. So if you're on your way to your vacation destination, you got $4,500 in your pocket. You've been planning this thing for five years, right? And all of a sudden, the day you're getting ready to depart, somebody is in need. What do you do? Vacation package or serve the Lord Jesus? Which do you choose? Deny yourself. You better deny yourself because if you fail to deny yourself, and take up your cross, you cannot follow Jesus. The real children of God are real, but the fake ones are fake. Either be about your father's business or not.
Time's almost up, guys. And when it's up, it's up. So shine your light before men indeed, that they may see with their very eyes that you are about your Lord's business. They need to, you, your life should be a living testimony and example that every person who's seen you, they know good and well who you are and what you're about. They, they will give testimony at, at any time. Even, the, even your enemies will testify. That, well, that, you know, I may not like them, but that, that people do what they say they're going to do. Be about your father's business. Many people are going to be left here because you're nothing. Your lights are out. And right now, we're sitting on top of this right here on the screen. This, this morning, I believe it was this morning. A volcano kicked off in the middle of the South Pacific, a volcano so big that, that they immediately announced for tsunami watches across the entire uh, West Coast of the United States, South America, Japan, and other places for tsunami, right? This thing was huge, so huge that when it went off, it turned the night or the daytime to night. It blackened the sky. Beginning of Sorrows is here. It is here, and it's going to hit with sudden destruction. That means one single day, everything seems normal, and then all of a sudden, lights out. Terror and torment and sorrows and tribulation and pangs will fall upon this world and all the people that are in sin and not about their father's business. It will hit them all. And it's here. You are sitting at the very edge, the last few seconds. This is the last of the sheep roundup. This is the last call to get your house in order. That means everything about your life better match that Bible. You better make white raiment happen in your life. You better be standing in holiness and quit playing fake church. You better be about your father's business and quit being like the goats. It says right here in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 3, it says, For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. This is for all them who don't serve the Lord, who are not about the Lord's business, and those who are in sin, all the sinful, all in together, it says, but you, brethren, are not in darkness that day should overtake you as a thief. No, you're not. You know good and well what time it is. The Lord always lets you know what time it is. We don't know the day or the hour, but we know the season. He told us clearly when you see these things begin, look up your redemption draws now. Well, they have already began. We are late in the hour. So know what time it is. Get, get to business. Do the work. So he gave me Proverbs 24, 20 through 22. I'm going to read it real quick. It says, for there shall be no reward to the evil man. The candle of the wicked shall be put out. My son, fear thou the Lord and the king, and meddle not with them that are given to change, for their calamity shall rise suddenly. And who knows the ruin of them both? Right there. Their calamity shall rise suddenly. That is sudden destruction. It's fixing to happen. He gave me Psalms 58, the whole thing. So I'm going to read it. To the chief musician, I don't have no idea how to say that. Altus Chith, I have no idea. So I'll just start here. Do you indeed speak righteousness, O congregation? Do you judge uprightly, O ye sons of men? Yea, in heart you work wickedness. Huh. Didn't we talk about this last night? From the abundance of a man's heart, so shall his mouth speak. Then it say that in your heart, the things in your heart, the darkness of a man's heart, that's what defiles him. Yes, indeed. It says in your heart, you work wickedness. You weigh the violence of your hands in the earth. The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born. Speaking lies. Their poison is like the poison of a serpent. They are like the deaf adder that stops her ear, which will not hearken. That means they will not listen to the voice of charmers, charming never so wisely. Hmm. It says here in six, break their teeth, O God, in their mouth. Break out 
the great teeth of the young lions, O Lord. Let them melt away as waters which run continually when he bendeth his bow to shoot his arrows. Let them be as cut in pieces. Then that Bible tell you Jesus fixing to break the nations like a potted vessel. Then it tell you he returns to wage war to destroy the wicked and all the sinful off the face of the earth. Did you forget that part of the Bible? Verse 8 says, as a snail which melts, let every one of them pass away like the untimely birth of a woman that they may not see the sun. Did we not just read that as a woman that pangs with child to be delivered? That's how the sudden destruction shall come upon them. Just like at an untimely birth here, all of a sudden here it comes, but you're not going to see the light. You're not going to see the sun. You're going to see the darkness. Before your pots can fill the thorns, he shall take them away as with a whirlwind, both living and in his wrath. The righteous shall rejoice when he sees the vengeance. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked. So that a man shall say, verily, there is a reward for the righteous. Verily, he is a God that judgeth in the earth. Wow. It's a little bit of different language than this generation's church house been telling everybody. Would you agree? Yet God is not playing with sin, never ever has. Fake church has dwindled the Bible down to such a point that you can't even hear the truth in the midst of all the sugar-coated nonsense. Well, they're about to pay. Time is at hand. Your Lord is coming. And nobody seems to get the message in the heart. The message of this is on the docket. And this is not a game. This is not opinion. This is real. And when it's when it when it's go time, when it happens, where whatever you got going on is exactly where you're found. If you're in the dirt, then you're just found in the dirt. You had an opportunity like the rest of the entire earth to repent and turn to Jesus. Repent from all sin. Cease from sin. And separate from those people that are in sin. And to live your life as a living sacrifice unto the Lord. To be obedient. To live righteously. To do unto others as you'd have others do unto you. To be what the Bible said to do. But you, if you choose not to take that message and apply it to your life. Well, the judgment that comes is righteous. And Jesus said every, every tree that bears not good fruit will be hewn down and cast into fire. Sincere Guardian says it quite well. Maranatha. Anathema. Maranatha. The Lord's coming. And tonight we're going to be in 1 Corinthians. So let me know if y'all have questions. Please uh, post them in the chat room and I'll do my best to get them answered for you. And anybody new here, just to let you know, we stay in that King James. So heads up. Let me grab some water real quick and then we'll jump right into 1 Corinthians. All right. All right. Remember, guys, first Corinthians is the first letter or an epistle. Epistle means letter that was written by Paul, the apostle, unto the church at Corinth. So this is a letter. It's very important that you read a letter in its entirety so that you can understand all subject matter and its proper context in which it was written about. Fake churches are designed to trick you and they will use a sentence here and a sentence there, twisting its context and taking you left when that Bible said go right. Okay? Stripping your understanding. Make sure you don't li listen to this mess. You study this Bible to show yourself approved. You can rightly divide the word of truth. Okay? Don't let somebody fool you. Read and study your Bible. It's important. Especially your New Testament, which is your doctrine, which is your covenant. It's a blood covenant by Jesus Christ. Your very salvation is in these words of this book. And it says the same thing over and over from Matthew all the way to Revelation. Here we go. Chapter one. Paul called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God and Sosthenes, our brother, under the church of God, which is at Corinth to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus. 
looky here. That word right there says sanctified. That word means a very particular word. It means cleansed of all sin, made separate and holy. That's a saved person right there. That's a born again person. They're not in sin anymore. They're clean. They've been washed by the blood of the lamb, sanctified, born again. So to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints. Notice they're not called to be sinners who keep singing songs at the first Baptist, second uh, Baptist, whatever, Methodist, Lutheran, Pentecostal church or whatever you got. That's not what they're called to be. They're called to be saints. Not a bunch of people just playing church. It says, with all that in every place call upon the name of Jesus Christ to our Lord, both theirs and ours. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace of God which is given you by Jesus Christ, that in everything you are enriched by him in all utterance and in all knowledge, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, so that you come behind in no gift, waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Huh. We're waiting for him, all right? There's two things fixing to happen. Some are fixing to go home in glory, and the rest... The wrath of God. Who shall also listen? Talking about when, when he comes, when Jesus comes, we, the saints, wait for him. Who shall also confirm you unto the end that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. So to confirm you to the end, that means from the day that you are saved until the day he calls you home. He will keep you from falling. They don't teach this anymore. You were told that we all still sin, but the Bible said, no, we don't. You were told that we all fall short of the glory of God every day. The Bible said, that's why you need a savior. That he will confirm you until the end, that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. It says, God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing. And that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. This is very important. You are all supposed to walk the same and be about the same business, speak in the same doctrine, the same judgment. For it hath been declared unto me of you, my brethren, by them which are the house of Chloe, that there are contentions among you. Now this I say, that every one of you saith, I am of Paul, and I of Apollos, and I of Cephas, and I of Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you. But Crispus and Gaius, lest any should say that I have baptized in my own name. And I baptize also the household of Stephanus. Beside, I know not whether I baptize any other. For Christ sent me not to baptize. You hear what he just said? The chief of the apostles, Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. People don't like this here. They have a problem with this here. But you better understand baptism is to be baptized into Christ's death. It's not water. Water is just symbolic of something that has transpired. That means you've been put to death, put into the, into the ground, in death, the flesh, sinful nature, put to death. And you're risen a new creature as Christ rose from the grave. The Bible said that, that the same power that rose him from the grave will quicken your mortal body. That means you've been the flesh has been put to death and you've been risen a new creature, a brand new creature born of the spirit. Christ didn't come baptized with water, but with fire and the Holy Ghost. That's what that's talking about. So indeed, Christ did not send him to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. What's the wisdom of words? That's all these people going on and on and on with all of their, their, their intellect and their technically this and technically that. And that and this, you know what I'm saying? Always acting like they're super smart, super educated. Not in most of these churches are ate up with. Nope, just blunt and simple. Straight to the point is what he was sent to preach. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. 
For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified under the Jews a stumbling block and under the Greeks foolishness, but under them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For you see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. That's a fact. Forget all these churches with all these congregation members. No, why does the gate to destruction? Many go in there. You're looking, you need to be understanding. When you talk about saints, you're looking for people that are born again. That they are freed from all sin and they live their life in obedience to the Bible. That's saints. So no, indeed, not many wise men. Okay, not many mighty men, not many noble men are called many are called but few are chosen it says but god hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise and god hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty and base things that means the bottom of the bucket things of the world and things which are despised hath god chosen yea and things which are not to bring to not things that are this is very interesting because when I introduce individuals to the brothers and sisters in Christ, some of them are, are, are really taken back. They don't like the fact that brother so-and-so is from the streets, came from a homeless shelter, has nothing. They don't like the fact that some are the, the, the off-scouring of the earth in their day the most wicked, vile, heathen sinners you could think of who turned to Jesus, loved Jesus, believed with all faith in Jesus, and Jesus set them free. They don't like it. And their prideful mentality bothers them, okay, because they're puffed up, they're mighty, right? They're, they're the things exalted on this earth. They cannot accept the fact that so lowly a person, oh, God will save them. But, but me, I'm a great pillar of community. How are you going to tell me I'm not saved? We all still sin. How are you going to tell me you don't sin? Well, they are, they're offended. God does indeed choose the base things of the world and things which are despised. Yeah, the things this world hates, God has chosen them. And the things which are not to bring to not things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him are you in Christ Jesus, who of God has made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Any questions in chapter one? Chapter 2. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God, for I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling, and my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect. Stop right there. The apostle is telling you that we, that's the those sent by the Lord to teach the sheep, okay, speak wisdom among them that are perfect. Perfect. How did this get in the Bible? 
How? Well, Jesus said, be ye perfect as your father in heaven is perfect. Salvation is to remove anything in you that is unpure, making you flawless, making you perfected in Christ, that you walk all pleasing to him, pure, sanctified. And once you are clean, once you're born again, well, you're no longer the sinful creature. You're now in the spirit, the Holy Spirit. And you've been given the mind of Christ, for you will be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So then, at that point, we do indeed speak wisdom among them that are perfect. The beginning of wisdom is fear of the Lord. Those in Christ begin to understand. It says, yet not the wisdom of this world, nope, nor the princes of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the, the heart of man that the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. This is for those that love him. Remember, Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commands. He says, but God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man, save the spirit of a man, which is in him. Even so the things of God knows no man, but the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God. That we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God. Now listen careful. This is important. This is why you guys find yourself in argument and debate when you should not be debating these people. You try to explain things to a natural man. That's a person who's still in the flesh. They're not born of the Spirit. You try to explain things to them but they receive not the things of the spirit of God because they can't. It says, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. A person who is in the flesh cannot understand nor comprehend the things from a person who is born again. When you explain to him the simple truth, even the most simple of things, how Jesus even freed you from all sin, that's foolishness to him or her. When you explain what the Lord has done for you, many of you are walking miracles. Many of you have miracles going on right now in your own household that you can't explain to somebody across the street. They just look at you and roll their eyes. They cannot receive the things that are spiritually discerned because you must be of the spirit to discern them. It says here, but he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Any questions in chapter 2? Swamplet, he says in the chat room, talking to someone in the flesh is like talking to a brick wall. They don't understand anything spiritual. Yep. And sometimes it's not like a like a, a wall, but sometimes you try to explain something to them and they want to ramble on and debate endlessly debating when you're just trying to tell them a simple fact. I'm not asking you to debate what I'm saying. I'm telling you a fact. Just like I tell you, the end is here. Jesus said, get them sheep. We're going home. I'm not asking you for your opinion. I am telling you what my boss said to tell you. When I tell them that they've got to be freed from sin, they laugh and scoff. When I tell them how the Lord cleansed me of sin, they call me a liar because they can't swallow that because that would mean that they're in trouble. <laughs> they don't like that. They don't want the truth. But it is what it is. Meanwhile, we're supposed to separate from them. So after you tell a, a, a heretic, for example, a heretic is a person who, who twists the Bible, to twist the doctrine, perverting the gospel of Christ. And anyway, after the first and second admonition, that's the first and second time you've had to correct that person about that doctrine, that heresy, and they don't, they don't receive what you said. You are to mark that person and have no part with them. You cannot continue with people 
who remain in the flesh. You've got churches on this earth from every, every continent on this earth who bring in people in the flesh, they remain in the flesh, and they think that we're all in the flesh. They, and they make, they make things sound good, who have a, 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 an outward appearance of righteous, just like uh, the church is not a, a whatever for uh, saints, but a hospital for sinners. Well, that has a form of righteousness on the outer appearance, so you examine what they're doing. They're trying to tell you to stop turning away people and judging amongst the flock, to let sinners in and let them abide there with you and continue with you. You must be crazy. The Bible said that we're to purge from amongst our people that wicked person. If you don't want to repent and obey the gospel, then get yourself up and get out. That's the rules. They don't like the rules. <laughs> this world is so far fallen. Chapter 3, and I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto were you not able to bear it, neither yet now are you able, for you are yet carnal. But whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are you not carnal and walk as men? For while one says, I am of Paul, and another Another, I am of Apollos. Are you not carnal? Who then is Paul? And who is Apollos? But ministers by whom you believed, even as the Lord gave to every man. I have planted Apollos water, but God gave the increase. So then neither is he that plants anything, neither he that waters, but God that giveth the increase. Now he that plants and he that waters are one. And every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. But we are laborers together. Listen, this is talking about the ones who are sent by the Lord, ordained by God to feed them sheep. It says, for we are laborers together with God. You, that's the congregation, are God's husbandry. Husbandry. You're his farm. You're his crop. You are God's building. It says, according to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another builds thereon. But let every man take heed how he builds thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest for the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work or what sort it is. If any man, if any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. This is talking about you, you, the you. Okay, you are God's building, you are his temple. If you, and we're talking about people that are saved, we're not talking about the, the goats, we're talking about sheep. If you understand that, that, as he says, he is a wise master builder. So he's here to help you to build a spiritual house. Okay. A spiritual house laid on the foundation of Jesus Christ. That means that foundation is not on sinking sand. You're on a rock. No, freed from sin. Cannot sink in that, in that sin. No way. You are on Jesus. If that foundation be laid, no, you know, no one can lay another foundation but Christ. So if you build up on that foundation, I remember the framework of the apostles is built on the foundation of Christ. Okay, that's how it works. Christ set the foundation, your very salvation, and your instructions come from those he sent to give you instruction. That's the framework. Silver, precious stones. Okay, gold, silver, precious stones. Those are precious things. Okay, they're not flammable. But wood, hay, and stubble is flamm flammable. And when it's tried try by fire, you got something going on in your life or something you've been uh, not doing. And what time I say, we're talking about doing something, you uh, let, letting things come in or around you that are not what God said to do, or that you've been letting things clutter up and you're not cleaning and walking appropriately. Well, guess what? When you get tried, you're going to get tried by fire. <laughs> and it's going to burn. You're going to suffer the loss of all of it. And, and, and you will come out of that thing with a limp and a brand new understanding. You're going, to be, you're going to be purged of any and everything that's not okay. So we're not talking about just sin. We're talking about people who have already belonged to Christ 
and yet they're walking off the little trail they were told to walk on, right? You keep letting them old family family members come back around your house, or you go you go find out. You keep uh, letting people come around you that are not speaking the same exact doctrine. You let them be in your life. Okay, you're going to find out. All these things have repercussion. God will chastise every child he receives. And it's not always the same. It's not always him clearing his throat or the Holy Spirit making you feel a little bit uh, condemned. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, he will snatch you up and cast you out. You can get turned over to the devil to learn a lesson. Don't go that way. Make sure that you are the things that are not flammable. Make sure you walk in all holiness as gold, silver, precious stones. That's what you want to be. Serious about your Lord with salt. It says, know ye not that you are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwell in you. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. So now, last night when we were going through our study, we began to talk about some things that go into a man that defile him or that don't defile him, that mankind says. Now, Jesus said nothing goes in a man that defiles him, but he told you what does defile a man. It's what comes from his heart, lying and fornicating and adultery and lasciviousness and drunkenness and the wrath or the hate of man, right? Covetousness, witchcraft, variance, all that kind of stuff that comes out of a man's heart. That defiles him. It also says in the scripture that if any root of bitterness spring up inside of you and defile you, you are to keep yourself holy, both in spirit and in flesh. So it says, if any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. You cannot walk backwards. You cannot let the devil on you. Your job is to resist the devil. In every way, you're to hold no grudges on people. You are to forgive them. You are to separate from people that are filthy because if you associate, then you find you are found guilty before God. You are not to allow the devil to put things in your mind, though he will, but you kick him right back out. What I'm saying is putting, he will put, you're not to allow it to stay and remain. You kick the garbage out of your mind. You don't sit there and watch and listen to the filth in your mind, imagination. You're to cast down imaginations, taking every thought captive, to the obedience of Christ. So any of that stuff, understand that a real child of God is holy, okay? And so it's letting you know here that if any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. So if they're not a true child of God, they will turn back into their filth like a dog returned to his vomit. Therefore, prepare themselves for their destruction, whether they like it or acknowledge it. It really doesn't matter because we are the temple of God. It says, let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seems to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. So I'm a fool for Christ. They call me an idiot. They call me all kinds of things. So I gladly become the fool, which makes me wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he takes the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. Therefore, let no man glory in men. For all things are yours. Whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or things present or things to come, all are yours. And you are Christ and Christ is God's. Any question here in chapter three? Chapter four. Let a man so account of us. This is us, the, uh, the apostles here, as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. So who would find him faithful? It is God himself. God doesn't hire people and put them to the business that are incapable. No, he has chosen them, cleansed them, and equipped them for this business. It says, but with me, this is Paul, but with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you or of man's judgment. A lot of people were trying to come against Paul. They didn't like Paul. They were trying to point out all kinds of things that they didn't uh, receive or find acceptable about Paul, but Paul doesn't work for them. So he says, but with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you or of man's judgment. Yea, I judge not my own self, for I know nothing by myself, yet am I not hereby justified? But he that judgeth me is the Lord. Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts. 
and then shall every man have praise of God. And these things, brethren, I have in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sakes, that you might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written, that no one of you be puffed up one against another. For who makes thee to differ from another? And what hast thou that thou didst not receive? Now, if thou didst receive it, why dost thou glory as if thou hadst not received it? Now you are full, now you are rich, you have reigned as kings without us, and I would to God you did reign, that we also might reign with you. For I think that God had set forth us, the apostles, last, as it were appointed to death. For we are made a spectacle unto the world, and to angels, and to men. We are fools for Christ's sake, but you are wise in Christ. We are weak, but you are strong. You are honorable, but we are despised. Even unto this present hour, we both hunger and thirst and are naked and buffeted and have no certain dwelling place and labor working with our own hands. Being reviled, we bless. Being persecuted, we suffer it. Being defamed, we entreat. We are made as the filth of the world and are the offscouring of all things unto this day. I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons, I warn you, for though we, you, for though you, sorry, have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet have you not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. Wherefore, I beseech you that you be followers of me. For this cause have I sent unto you Timotheus, who is my beloved son and faithful in the Lord, who shall bring unto you remembrance of my ways, which be in Christ, as I teach everywhere in every church. Now some are puffed up as though I would not come to you, but I will come to you shortly if the Lord will. And we'll know not the speech of them which are puffed up, but the power. For the kingdom of God is not word, but in power. What will ye? Shall I come unto you with a rod or in love and in the spirit of meekness? Any questions here in chapter four? <clears throat> All right. That's a good place for us to pause right there. So listen, make sure you know the difference in sheep and goats. Sheep do the business of the Lord. Goats just hear the word. They hear about the Bible. But they don't do it. All right. And whether they like it or not, judgment comes. All right. And if you're found to be a goat, you're going to go where goats go. And that's out of darkness. They, they just is what it is. You want to be a sheep? You got to be freed from all sin and follow the Lord. You got to take up your cross and follow Jesus. Deny yourself. Take up that cross and follow Jesus. That means whatever he asks of you. You deny yourself, take that cross up, and you carry it, no matter how heavy it is. You do whatever he has. Use your life to serve one another. Be about your father's business. Guys, the reward is great. It's eternal. I mean, your inheritance is to rule and reign with Christ. You're fixing to take and put off this, Im this mortal body and put on immortality. You're about to go with the Lord in glory. Why would you trade it for this earth? I don't get it. I would never, ever trade it. I will serve the Lord until the day he cracks that sky and calls me home. I don't care. I don't care what we go through. I'm gladly assume the position of a sheep to help one another, to love one another, to actually lay your life down for the brethren. Be about your Lord's business. Shine your lights before men so they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. I gladly assume the position, and I hope you do too. All right, guys, I got a few people on a prayer board tonight. Please keep them in prayer. I've got Amanda asking for prayers that she gives Jesus thanks and wants to glorify uh, or she does give Jesus thanks and wants to glorify him Ask that he keeps her focused in obedience and without blemish in Jesus name. Ballot Jr. Ask for prayers to always walk in meekness and charity and for strength to cast down imaginations in Jesus name. Derek asked for prayers to be, um, to be unblameable in Jesus name. See, a balanced senior asked for prayers to continue walking in charity in Jesus' name. Anya want, asking for prayers to walk in all holiness in Jesus' name. Ketra asked for prayers for wisdom in Jesus' name. Rena asked for prayers to be without blemish in Jesus' name. Mario asking for prayers to have more faith in Jesus' name. Michael and Malachi ask for prayers for obedience in Jesus' name. Marquise is asking for prayers for wisdom and understanding in Jesus' name. Sean asking for prayers for strength through devil attacks in Jesus' name. Isaiah asked for prayers for maturity and selflessness in Jesus' name. And please keep me in your prayer also. Uh, uh, sickness will go away in Jesus' name. And my wife also, that uh, she's having uh, uh, body pains and stuff with pregnancy. So please pray for her in that matter uh, in Jesus' name. 
Amen. All right, guys. My wife just put the email in the chat room. So if you need anything, you need to get a hold of me or you have questions or whatever the case, send me an email. It's southern7778 at Gmail. And I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So thank you guys for all your prayers. We're praying for you guys. And hang on. We don't have long. Your Lord is coming. All right. We're going to wrap up. We will pick up tomorrow night, Lord willing, unless he calls us home tonight. Y'all have a good night. Good night.